So, yeah, luckily at that point when I'm still working at BBC, actually before the end of the um, first year, mm. um, I get a call from the HR of TI. Mm -hmm. And they tell me, because even when I left TI, I told them, I told my then the executive director, mm. I just joked, you know, I'm just leaving for a sabbatical. I just need a little break. I'll be mm. back. Mm. You know, you know, they just joke, but obviously I was mm. joking. Mm. So I, apparently, I, maybe they took it seriously because mm. they called me and they asked me, so when you, when you were leaving, you said that you were just going to, for a little while, you need a little break. Have you rested? Mm. I'm like, yeah, I've rested. So can you, are you ready to come back? And I said, oh, if there's a, if there's a, if there's a bigger challenging job, yes, I could. I could. Mm. Then they said, okay, let, we'll, we'll call you. Mm. So they take a bit of time before calling me, mm. you know, but I would go back to the TI work. I would just, you know, look, go back to their website mm read oh what are they doing now mm. you know the reports and all that i'm like hey yeah, i miss this you mm. know mm. and even at home at that time i'm mm. but they have already gotten married i've just mm. gotten married mm. my first year of marriage mm. my husband would look at me and listen to me they mm. would talk about the corruption and all this mm. then he, one day he told me don't tell me you want to go back to ti <laughs> 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 and i told i looked at him and told him actually i do yeah I, I do if they if they came back to me i would go back yeah and he told me well for as long as you're not taking a pay cut yeah and i just laughed yeah. So anyway, so finally, mm. after a long time, mm. around uh, 2014, mm. T.I. come, mm. um, the director asks to meet me. Mm. Uh, we meet and he says, yeah, they're looking at starting some, the a unit from the new strategic plan, they have a unit on research, learning, mm. uh, which covers communications, monitoring and evaluation and mm. research. Mm. Would I be interested? Mm. And I say, well, I've not really done much. I've never headed research. M&E, mm. &D, yes, I did a bit of it in ICL, mm. but I can't, I could. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but he mm. told me, you know, at this point is managerial. Mm. The m and and research is managerial. Mm. My, Of course, my substantive work is mm. communications, but mm. having to oversight the others. Mm. And I said, yeah, mm. I think I can. Mm. They said they'll be advertising for a job mm. and maybe I should apply when it comes. Mm. So they advertised for the job uh, and they applied. Mm -hmm. And they applied and they called me. In fact, they mm. called me and told me, yeah, you got the job, you know. Um, when can you come? Yeah. So that's how I went back to TI. Oh. Yes, and by the way, I took a pay cut. <laughs> my husband had warned me, don't take a pay cut. But for yeah. me at that point, yeah. I thought, yeah, I can continue earning, I mean, yeah. more money. Yeah. But then I'm miserable. I yeah. don't feel like I'm growing. Yeah. I'm missing out. Meanwhile, there's all this work from the 2013 elections. Yeah. You know, now there's new things they're looking at. Yeah. There's this new Jubilee government. Mm, mm. There's corruption has changed. Mm. You know, and I was like, I am missing out. Mm, I, mm. I want to be, I want to be back there. Mm. You want to be in the thick of yeah, things. So you want I, to be in passion. Yes, what I really enjoyed doing, mm. and I really enjoyed the work of mm. TI. Mm. I enjoyed the people I worked mm. with. I mm. really enjoyed it. Mm. So I, I actually. What's the lesson? That's a. How would you summarize the lesson there? I mean, you you follow your heart yeah what 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 decisions around you then would allow for that to happen i think for me first was following my my passion mm -hmm. um i then identified at that point that uh, i was so much as much as i was doing the governance work mm. but i realized that i'm more of the content person mm. you know i want to be where you where you know influencing what's going into that message you know what's going into that work not getting the work that is finished and then having to you know run with it mm. But then also there's a whole aspect around I felt that I was doing so many things. Mm. I mean, yes, you can say, yeah, uh, you don't want to be a jack of all trades. Mm. But for me, it was about learning. Mm. I, I realized I learned so much at TI because I was mm. able to do more than communications, mm. more than what I mm. had, had learned from journalism. Yeah. So for me, I wanted, I and I always encourage young people, mm. be in a space where you can learn. learn. You know, you don't have to follow this narrow path mm. where at the end you just maybe get one or two things mm. that may not help you so much in life mm. but be in a learning institution mm. where there's so many other things happening mm. that you're absorbing and learning mm. such that you can be able to you can remove yourself from this space mm. and go to another space but you've learned so much yeah. you you're always relevant exactly because you've learned and absorbed so much mm. And then also the whole thing about, as I said, I, I took a pay cut, mm. you know, at that time. Mm. And I was just starting a family. Mm. But at that point, I didn't mm. care. I was like, me, mm. I just want to do what I like. Mm. Mm. The money can come later. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, and, and so I took the pay cut and I went back to TI uh, because I realized that, yes, I can be here earning money, but mm -hmm. I'm miserable. Mm. But I can also be somewhere. Mm. Well, I'm earning less, mm. but I'm happy. You're happy. So happiness is not really about money. Mm. It counts, money counts, mm. it makes you do mm. many things. Mm. But maybe they, they also tell you that um, you you know you, you, you make a living from what you get, but you enjoy life 
by what you give. By what you give. Exactly. Yeah. And I think for me, um, TI allowed me to give. To give more. And and to give more and, and, and enjoy more. And and made me have a more meaningful life. Mm. And so that was really mm. what the lesson mm. that I learned. Mm. So I went back to TI. Yeah. My parents couldn't believe it. But then they were like, okay, but we've been, we were in this whole drama three yeah. years, five years ago yeah. when you wanted to join and we said no. Mm. But now I think we understand you. Yeah. Ah, you go. Because yeah. yeah. they asked me, then I, they asked me, what are you going to do there? I said, research and learning. And my dad asked, but do you understand what research and learning is? I yeah. said, ah, I will understand it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I know what research is. Right. I know what, what M&D is. I've yeah. done all those things before. Yeah. It's about managing, yeah. and I, I know now with the B, experience at BBC, the goodness with it is that I was a, I had been in, I, I was a manager yeah. at BBC Media Action, so it had also, been in, in, you know, grown in, me in management. in management. That's actually one of the things I took out of BBC Media Action. It had yeah. grown me in management, mm. planning, organizing, mm. supervising, because yeah. mm. I had a big team. Mm. So going back again, mm. now being able to, mm. you know, mm. ha have mm. all this. Mm. Yeah. One of our flagship products is a bribery index. Mm -hmm. Bribery index. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So one of the things we did significant was really just go back and do a trends analysis of bribery mm -hmm. in the last, you know, five years, mm -hmm. uh, some of which I was not even there, but it was important mm. um, to, to just now go back. What are the bribery trends mm -hmm. in East, not just Kenya, mm. but East Africa. Oh yeah. So, so that was an opportunity for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. uh, but then also the the whole thing around um, you know going back to TI, mm -hmm. as I said, I was I was in charge of uh, the, this M&D, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of focus again on on results orientation, you know, strengthening the results orientation. Now internally, yes, mm -hmm. demonstrating impact not just internally mm -hmm. but everywhere. I mean, mm -hmm. donors are giving you money, mm -hmm. you want to see results, mm -hmm. you have to learn how to communicate, mm -hmm. write the reports. Mm -hmm. So being part of that, just mm -hmm. you know, growing the M&D mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. so that you're mm -hmm. able to demonstrate mm -hmm. impact and results mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, trying to to apply more tools for impact mm -hmm. monitoring as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. I think that was very critical for me and of course in terms of communication the mm. communication space was also growing in Kenya mm. uh, social media mm. uh, when I'd left TI the first time yeah social media had picked but mm. I think in TI we hadn't picked it up so much I mm. had, had even at, at that point before I left I tried starting Facebook and a Twitter page but we we're not so keen on mm. those mm. but then now by 2014 when mm. I go back mm. I mean everyone is on social media mm. Facebook Twitter LinkedIn mm. Mm. I mean that's a thing mm. Instagram so now really just trying to catch up mm. trying now for all mm. of us to catch up with mm. with social media because mm. we we had not gotten into it mm. um so well mm. initially when mm. when you know when the whole world was turning to social media right. Right. so so doing that and getting all these innovative mm. um communication mm. platforms mm. yeah mm. 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 and then uh when you then move into head of programs mm. um you're leading mm. a huge portfolio of programs mm. Um, what's that looking like? I mean, programs are at the heart of Transparency International Kenya. Yeah, yeah. Without the programs, yeah. we would not be there. <laughs> yeah. It's the programs that drive. Yeah. You know, everything else, finance, yeah. uh, you know, admin, uh, yeah. HR, research, learning, M&D, communications, yeah. is yeah. all because of programs. programs. So I was, I'd never even thought I'd be, mm. I'd be, I'd, I, I never knew I would do programs mm -hmm. because all along in TI, I had never done programs. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, in, at some point you do because I'm in advocacy mm. or I'm in research and learning, mm. but not really at the center of it where you're doing concepts, where mm. you're doing the annual plans, the reports, <laughs> all those things. Mm. Never really. Mm. It was always touch and go, touch mm. and go, mm. you know, or you're, you're, you're standing forth for someone who's not there mm. or you're helping someone out or you're supporting. Right. So I'd never really done it substantively. So yeah. when my e e director came and said, I want to give you additional responsibilities, mm -hmm. head of programs, and I was like, wow, I've never mm. even worked in a program in TI. Mm. You know, and I'd, I was just honest with him. Mm. Hey, can I do it? And you know, he told me, and he, I, I see sometimes he'd make things sound so easy. Um, he'd make things sound so easy. Mm. Just says, Sheila, the head of programs, Programs, you just need to, uh, you know, look at uh, activity proposals, approve them, um, requests for, you know, meetings, you know, send people, um, you know, look at reports, uh, you know, and you do reports. I mean, you're a writer, mm. read them and approve, mm. you know, organize people. You, you know, he actually just made it sound so easy. Mm. After he talked, I was like, okay, yeah, maybe I can. I can try. Mm. So I guess what they had seen was a leadership coordination, because mm. mm. um, I think maybe I'm, I'm I'm good at that, right? In terms of coordinating mm. and and because programs is really okay. There's a technical aspect, mm. but there's also about you know leading and 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 following people 
mm. you know following up on things mm. you know mm. uh, plans mm. and and, uh, and and things like and reporting and mm. those are really mm. some of the things I'm, 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 I'm I guess I was good at mm -hmm. so he encouraged me and told me you can mm. you can because I tell him oh you know some of these governance things you guys talk about because you know now I mean yes I've done governance I've done some advocacy mm. but I'm like I still need a little time to understand some of the he said mm -mm, you will learn on the job you just read and relearn mm. by the time you're done read, reading all those reports going for all those meetings you will learn mm. and that's how it happened within months I mean <laughs> I felt like I've been doing the job mm. for for years mm. um because I, I, yeah, I think I enjoyed it as mm. well. Mm. Um, the coordination, even the technical aspects. Mm. Uh, but I, and then also they tell you, was it was it um, Cicero who said you you, you read to lead. Mm. So mm. even as a leader, mm. you know, you, it doesn't mean that just because you are a leader and you know everything. Exactly. You also learn, and yeah. and and even John F. Kennedy said that mm. learning and learning and leading, leading are indispensable from yes. each other yeah you know as you lead you mm. learn mm -hmm. so i took it at that that this mm. is also a learning opportunity mm. and i can't call myself a leader if i'm if i'm a yes yes I, you, you can never be a complete product you're mm. always learning mm. and i even started getting um inspiration from many people mm. who will tell you that they started leading an organization but even when they were coming to lead they only knew one component of it but there's something that they had mm. where that they were able to lead it's about bringing people together mm. you know facilitating them to be able to perform and to do their work mm. and so that's how i took my head of programs role mm. about being i may not understand everything that you do in any case you're you're here because you're the subject expert and mm. I, i'm not the subject expert mm. and that's even how i still look at it today mm. there's so many things that yeah it does me i'm not the subject expert mm. those people my colleagues are the experts mm. for me it is facilitating you know, I play a facilitative role mm. and, and creating the environment for you to be able to work mm. and bring out, you yeah. know, your expertise, mm. you know, for the good of the, for the fight against corruption. Mm. So I took it as that, that I cannot be mm. a complete product. I don't know everything. Mm. Um, but I still, uh, yeah, so I learned a lot mm. on that because also you, you push yourself, you, you, all these reports on extractives that I, I receive every day, even me, let me now sit and understand mm. what's this, you know, all these things, all, all these things on security, police reforms. Mm. Um, you know, judiciary. I, I mean, I'd not really worked, you know, so substantively on it. Mm. But then now, when you're leading, you actually now take an interest because you have to know what every person, mm. in every corner of that institution is doing. Mm. So it also pushes you to understand more, to read more, and understand, mm. so that you're able to facilitate them to bring out, you know, to bring out their best. Yeah. So that was really the the mm. program's work. Mm. 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 And um, how many years did you spend as head of programs? Five. For? Five. Five, five yeah. years. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's uh, that's significant. Five years, yeah. So I did it for five years. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it was an enjoyable job mm -hmm. in terms of facilitating people, mm -hmm. coordinating. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, like, uh, you're also, like, almost the backstop, you're backstopping the executive director. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because who program... Was, yeah? Who was the executive director? Samuel Kimmel. Oh, okay. He mm -hmm. was executive director even when I left yeah, the other yeah, time. Yeah, So I'd worked with him. Mm -hmm. uh, he, f uh, he had come in in mm -hmm. 2010. So we had worked together for about two years mm. and then i left and then mm. Mm. came back and worked under him for five another five years all right so yeah it was it, it's also a backstopping role yeah. because you're you're supporting the executive director yeah. he, you know he's looking also at the strategic issues yeah. uh you know the, the, you know bigger mm. those very high level advocacy mm. and all mm. that mm. so you may not have all the time to mm. look into the nitty-gritty yeah. of the programming yeah. and the and the right and the reports yeah. and the Proposal, so there yeah. has to be someone doing the technical work. So you're more of the technical person. Yeah. Little did you know that she was preparing you. For, yes, it was preparing for... me. And many times he would come and uh, at some point, especially from around 2017, he would yeah. joke, yeah. you know, Sheila, one day when you're in that, our offices were adjusted. So he'd point at his office and the chair. He said, one day when you're sitting in that chair, and that was the first time I laughed, I said, oh, me, I can't. I can't. Mm -hmm. You know, I just said, I can't. What would I be mm -hmm. doing in your chair? He said, mm -hmm. one day, and it, he repeatedly said it yeah. until I started to believe it. Mm -hmm. Like, Allah, one day I could actually sit on that chair. Because mm -hmm. every time we would speak, mm -hmm. you'd always end. One day when you're sitting on that chair, you will see what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You know, one day when you're sitting on that chair, you'll understand. Mm -hmm. And you'd say, I'm not going to do this now. But I leave it for you guys for one day when you're sitting in that office. And I told him one day, don't stop saying that because I won't. <laughs> and mm. then slowly I started believing. Allah, I can actually do it. Actually, I remember when I was at BBC, when I was leaving BBC Media Action, and my then boss was trying to convince me to stay. And I looked at him and I joked and I laughed. You know, at TI, I can even become the executive director. Here, career path is a bit, eh? 
I'm not so sure. Mm. But you know, then I was just joking and mm. I even laughed at myself and I said, Sheila, what are you saying? At ETI, mm. ETI executive director, oh mm. goodness, keep mm. dreaming. Mm. <laughs> mm. But then, yeah, it happened. But mm. I also think that uh, my, my then, my, he, he's, he created that sense of belief, yeah. yeah. self-belief in yeah. me because you just always, every conversation yeah. would end with that. Yeah. And so, that's, yeah. That's, that's incredible mentorship. I want to hear how then you became the mm. ED. Yeah. Let's do a quick battery change then we come back to this part yeah. of the story. Okay.